coming out of the chemo center, uh, I had to get blood work done. Uh, I am on weekly visits to the hospital in order to get blood work done and to keep an eye on my levels in my, my liver, uh, which is fine. Yay. It's such an easy thing to do in order to stay, I mean, complicated by COVID, <laughs> but uh, ah, what's got me today is I'm in the chemo center and uh, how do you do cancer alone? Fuck, how do you do cancer alone? I just, so because of COVID, the hospitals are now in full measures again, at least for those of us visiting on a regular basis. Uh, by that, I mean uh, the measures that they're taking to keep everybody safe, which is uh, appreciative and awesome. Caution, uh, red light camera ahead. Yes, I have something in my car that makes sure that I don't get tickets because location. <laughs> I happen to be a speedy little driver. It is true. Uh, so when we bought this car, my, <laughs> one of the features was to put a uh, little system in your car so that you could be alerted to when there are cameras for your red light, speed cameras, it'll jam. Uh, I know I'm saying this on a video and it's illegal and go fuck yourself, whatever. Um, but <laughs> I'm sorry, I just have zero fucks to give. <laughs> anymore about things that I just don't think are important. I shouldn't say that. Everyone should abide by the rules, uh, including myself, but um, I don't. And so when they asked us to put this thing in uh, to the car, my wife said no, because it was an extra expense, no need. And within one week of uh, buying a uh, fancy little car, I had four speeding tickets. And so she made me take the car back and put in that system. So that's what you're going to hear. Uh, chemo center. How do you do cancer alone? Wow. To every one of you that is doing cancer by yourself. Fuck. I know how hard Caution. it is Red uh, light because camera. I Ahead. have had, I've been around chronic disease. I feel like my whole life. Um, you know, I grew up in uh, rural Pennsylvania, upstate New York, so it's uh, farmland, uh, more importantly factories when I was growing up. So um, there's just a lot of sick people. There's a lot of people with, uh, with emphysema and cancer and um, lots of really gross diseases uh, that just seem to come with living in uh, factory towns and coal areas and such. Um, so I'm familiar with chronic disease and it's why uh, one of the things um, that is really cool, uh, not cool, but cool uh, about <laughs> being gay uh, is not cool as uh, families' reactions to when they find out that their family member is gay and they decide uh, to smite them with all of their religious might and kick them out of their homes and disown them, um, which happens way too frequently. But because of that, on the good part, one of the really cool things about being gay is that you have an incredible gay family. Uh, we are there for each other. Uh, we are our chosen family. And uh, because of that Caution. also, uh, and my familiarity with chronic disease and what it takes to live with chronic disease, um, I uh, have raised my hand several times in my life to be the caretaker of friends that were battling AIDS uh, and or cancer. Um, so I know you can't do it alone. I know it takes a village. I know, I know with every fiber of my being because I have been there to the end uh, with several people and I know how important it is uh, to have a village and I have a village. Uh, I have strangers in my village supporting me that I don't even know. <laughs> like, it's awesome. I have the most incredible wife one can imagine who has been there with me lockstep every 
fucking inch of the way. And uh, I'm in the chemo center this morning and it's really hard to go to the chemo center. There's, it's a room full of dying people. It's really fucking hard. And uh, there was a woman that was sitting in her chair and she was, uh, um, I'm sure, uh, in chemo because she's so tired that you saw her kept falling out and, and uh, falling asleep and then going to face plant on the floor. Mm -hmm. And uh, and yes, before any of you react, the uh, team uh, of medical professionals is all over it. They're, they always are, but there's nothing you can do when cancer patients, we all are on drugs that are exhausting and uh, we lose our ability to, uh, our balance, our control of our walking, uh, the ability to just stay awake. You think that that's not a thing, but I have fallen asleep talking to people. Like, like you just can't. It's these drugs. So they're there. They're taking care of us, but it just, it's just the way it is, right? And, and I'm just watching her, and I just thought about, like, the first day, the very first day that I went to chemo, I was so sick. I couldn't sit in the chair. I ended up laying down on the floor waiting for them to bring me into the infusion center my poor wife I just been diagnosed had this uh, rapid surgery and then here I am lying on the floor of the chemo center things were not looking good <laughs> so I'm just thinking about that and I'm thinking this woman she's there by herself and she's there by herself on, I'm going on the assumption just because it's COVID we're not allowed to have visitors right now and that's understandable because it's COVID and they have to keep everyone safe it still sucks hairy sweaty balls hairy sweaty fucking balls because when you come out of chemo sometimes you can't walk sometimes you don't have your balance sometimes you can't see uh, like things are foggy sometimes you, you can't think it's and how do you do that by yourself? Like, that's, it's, uh, it's so sad to me. And, and then there's a, another woman in there that probably had just been diagnosed, or this was maybe the first time she's been to the chemo center. Day one, I don't know, but for whatever reason, she was sitting there crying. I mean, I do know, because I ended up talking to her, because how do you let someone sit there and cry in front of you? Like, that's, how do we, <laughs> and that just brings me to what I'm thinking about, is how in this country... Are we so fucked up when it comes to our medical care? I mean, think about when when you're diagnosed with cancer. You now, number one, you need your health insurance. You need your health insurance. If you're so fucking lucky that it covers shit. <laughs> but you need that insurance. Which means you have to perform at your job whether you can or not. It means that you have to now put up with some shitty asshole fucking boss who treats you like shit and makes the work environment be super gross because you need your insurance. Like, you know, we're literally like owned by our bosses because of the way that our insurance is set up in this country. And then on top of that, we have to beg Beg for treatments to be approved. Beg yeah, for, 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 for medicine. Be, you know, and then on top of that, there, there's this, this like, you know, man up about uh, getting medical care instead of, you know, making it better. And, and, and these chemo centers, why are these chemo centers filled with people that, that are, that are, it's, it's such a horribly depressing fucking place to go to. And I've been to so many chemo centers all around. And they're pretty, there's some that are pretty. There's, you know, Northwestern, all those rich white people are hanging out, getting their chemo done. And it's a beautiful place. But it's still depressing. And it's still a factory. How in today's world are we not looking at chronic diseases? Because now we're living with chronic diseases. We're living it's no longer you're diagnosed with cancer, you die of cancer. We get to stretch it. And I'm focused on stretching it. And I'm focused on not just surviving, not just existing. I want to live. I want to do it the best I can. And, 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 
and I don't want to I don't want to live in it I don't want to like go to an environment where where again the oncology team fucking amazing so this is nothing on on how their program or how they run things it just is the way it is like they're there to give me the chemicals but why isn't there a place where people can go that you can do paint by numbers while you're getting chemo that you can play board games with people while you're getting chemo or there's a nice comfy little soft day bed in, instead of a, a, a gross old chair I know I sound like a petulant child I should be super happy and this is the other thing we all sit there making apologies because you know I'm talking to this woman who's crying because she's overwhelmed that she has cancer and she's apologizing to me because I have stage four and hers is so little because it's it's she caught it early and and it's they think they have a hold of it and so she's apologizing to me for for being emotional and scared because she has cancer why isn't there someone there why isn't there a program where where like you have a cancer concierge like myself walking you through connecting you and then you get to instead of falling on your face you you have a, a, a nice comfy chair with a with a soft blanket and and you're having a coffee clatch or something. I don't know. I don't know how people do it alone. And I don't know why it's acceptable in today's world that we're just supposed to etch it out. Just exist is enough. Because it's not enough. Because again, what's the fucking point? I don't want to exist. I want to thrive even with cancer. I want to finish the video that I just made. Uh, just as a reminder for myself when I look at this in the future. And uh, for anyone that's watching. Um, today, going to the chemo center was super sad. Uh, and... I'm sitting in that sadness. I'm not going to stay in that sadness. But while I think about how uh, the world needs compassionate care centers to treat the whole human for chronic diseases. I mean, we have diabetes, we have HIV, we have cancer. We are living with chronic diseases now. We have to do it better because right now it sucks. Anyways, as I'm thinking about that, I decided to jump on my scooter, throw my dog into a backpack, enjoy this beautiful day, and carve a moment of joy out of the day. Because, again, it can't all be super heavy all the time. <laughs>